I look ridiculous. No, you don't. You look lovely. Look at you. Yeah, right. And how's looking like this going to help us learn about maths? Well, I was thinking you could cook a dinner party and at the same time we'll learn about ratios and proportions. Oh, great. Oh, you'll be fine. I tell you what, you'll cook for you, me and four of our friends. That's six in total. I'll be home by seven and I'll wait to taste good. Oh, not very demanding then. Oh, you'll be fine. Everything you need's in the flat. And um, here are the keys. Go on, Dave. Off you go. Well, what are ratios? Well, ratios are just a way of comparing things. And ratios can be easier to handle if you think of them as sharing parts of something bigger. For example, I've got a group of friends, which Dave hasn't, and four out of them are boys and three are girls. So that means the ratio of boys to girls in the group is four to three. Since there are seven people all together, we know that four sevenths of them are boys. So that leaves three sevenths that are girls, okay? But how can ratios be helpful? Well, let's say I was mixing some mortar to do some bricklaying, something I do every weekend, and I need to mix the cement and sand in the right ratio to make the mortar just right. Now, in this case, the ratio of cement to sand is two to seven. So that means for every two shovels of cement, I need seven shovels of sand. And that gives us nine shovels worth in total. But then, say I need more than nine shovels worth of mortar because I've just got more bricks to lay. I need to do a bit more maths to work out the right amounts of sand and cement. What I need to do is multiply up to find out how much I need. Let's say I wanted 21 shovels of sand instead of just seven. Then that's three times the amount of sand in my original ratio because seven times three is 21. It's three that's known as the multiplier. So what I need to do now is multiply up the cement by the same amount. So that's three. So in the original ratio, that was two to seven. We've already multiplied up the seven. So let's do the two. So two times three gives us six six shovels of cement and that gives us the ratio six to 21. Huh. All that talk of laying bricks has made me a little bit hungry. Let's see how Dave's getting on with my dinner. Mm. Nice flat. Yeah, it's good. Nice. Oh, looks like a brand new kitchen as well. It's um. Maybe a little bit nicer than mine. Fridge full of food and chocolate. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Lots of food there. It's nice. Ah, the ingredients. Perfect, she's got them out for me. And recipes. Chili con carne, good. Chocolate brownie, anything with chocolate is for me. And pink punch, sounds nice. Uh, I guess I'd better make the chili con carne first as it's the, uh, the longest one to cook. Got the ingredients. Method, but it says four. This is, I've got six tonight though. I'm gonna do four for six, well they could eat less. Oh, I'm gonna have to work it out. It is a maths program after all. Dave, is everything going all right? Well, sort of. What do you mean, sort of? Well, I've got the food and the, you know, the utensils and the oven and all the pots. Oh yeah, nice flat by the way. Thank you. It's just the chili con carne. Well, it says it's for four people, but obviously there's six here tonight, so what do I do? Well, ratios and proportions. Come on, Dave, ratios and proportions. Huh? Come on, you can do the maths. Work it out. All right. I need some more chocolate. I can do this. So the menu is for four people, and I'm cooking for six. So with the chili con carne, 400 grams of canned chopped tomato. So for four people, that's 400 grams. Okay, so for six, it's 600 grams, easy. Let's have a look. Now all I need to do is do that for the olive oil, the onions, the garlic, the chili powder, the minced beef. Oh, there's too many ingredients. Maybe I should do the pink punch first because that needs to go in the fridge and cool down. So I just mix together ginger ale, lemon juice, cranberry juice and pineapple juice in the ratio of three to one to two to four and make two liters worth. Why is it never easy? <laughs> I 
OK, there's quite a bit of maths going on here, so let's sort out the problem using ratios. I'm going to start with the chilli, as there's a lot more ingredients to deal with. So if we look at how many the recipe is for, compared to how many people are actually coming to dinner, we can see that it's gone from four to six. So that means the ratio is four to six. And we can use that ratio to work out how much more of the ingredients in the recipe we need. Now I have to work out how much I've got to multiply up by. We need to find the multiplier. But that's quite easy. It's the number I've got to multiply four by to get six, which is 1.5. Brilliant, and that is the multiplier. So what I need to do is multiply everything in the recipe by 1.5 and then we'll get everything in the correct proportion. Simple. Let's have a look at some of the ingredients. So we can see with the onions, we started with two times by 1.5 and that gives us three onions. And then we've got the garlic. We've got four cloves of garlic uh, times by 1.5. That's six cloves and oh, we've got the beef that in the original recipe was 1,000 grams, times by 1.5, that gives us 1,500 grams. Now let's take a look at the pink punch. This is a little bit different. This time, I know how much I want all together, but what I've got to do is work out how much of the bits of the ingredients I need. Now the recipe says I need ginger ale, and lemon juice, cranberry juice, and pineapple juice in the ratios of four to one to two to three. So this means I've got four plus one plus two plus three parts. So that's 10 parts all together. Now I wanna make two liters of pink punch. So that is 2000 milliliters. Now to find how big a part is, what I've got to do is split 2000 milliliters into 10 parts. So 2,000 divided by 10 gives us 200 milliliters. So what I need to do now is just multiply 200 milliliters by all of the parts of the different ingredients. So let's have a look. The ginger ale, that's four parts, four times 200, 800 mil. We've got the lemon juice, that's one part, that gives us 200. We've got the cranberry juice, two parts, 400. And finally the pineapple juice, three parts, 600. And as a final check, you can total up all of these numbers and you should get 2,000 millilitres. Perfect. Two, three, and four. Very nice. I'll turn it into there. Whoa. And it's now just red. Hmm, chocolate. Right, and to finish off the punch, I need 800 millilitres of pineapple juice. Let's put that in there. All the way. Oh. Um. Perfect. Oh. Perfect. We'll pull that into there. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Lovely. Now I'm going to put that in the fridge to keep it nice and cool. So like this. Ah. On the top there. Might add some fruit to it later on, make it look a bit more tropical. And if we check on the chili con carne, mmm, smells lovely. And now all I need to do is the chocolate brownie, which serves six, so there's no mass needed there. So I need 100 grams of butter, 175 grams of caster sugar, 75 grams of brown or muscovado sugar, and 125 grams of chocolate. Mmm, chocolate. I haven't eaten that much, have I? There'll be some more in the fridge. Hey Dave, how's it going? Yep, yeah, good. The chili con carne is uh, bubbling away nicely. Smells good. Good. And the, uh, the punch is in the fridge, getting nice and chilled. Ah, oh, and the brownie, how are they doing? I'm a bit particular about my brownies. We seem to be running out of chocolate. Why? Because there was 200 grams when I left this morning. I know, and the recipe says I need 125 grams, but I've only got 100 grams left. You don't have any more chocolate in the house somewhere, do you? No, and I don't think there's enough time to go and get some. So hang on, you've got 100 grams, but you need 125 grams. I tell you what, let's reduce all the rest of the ingredients by the same amount. And that way the brownies will still taste good, but they'll just be a bit smaller. Okay. 
More maths. I don't do the maths. Okay, I can do it. Right, so if I've got 125 grams of chocolate in the recipe, but I've only got 100 grams, that means I've got to do four fifths of everything else. Easy. So, well, a bit less. Um, 400 grams of butter is 80 grams, that's fine. But how do I divide two eggs into five? Oh. So let's have a look at this problem that Dave has created for himself. He's eaten too much chocolate, which means we've only got 100 grams out of the 125 grams that we need. And if we simplify 100 divided by 125, then we get four fifths. So to keep all the ingredients in the same proportion, which will mean the brownies still taste good, everything must be multiplied by four fifths. So going through my list, we have four fifths of 100 grams of butter, that gives us 80 grams. And we've got four fifths of 180 grams of caster sugar, which gives us 144 grams. Now I'm gonna leave Dave to work out the rest of those because it was he that created the problem. Well, I hope Fran appreciates all this. One there, one there, yeah, yeah. There we go, ah, candles as well. Smells good. So yeah, that's the table set. I just hope the food tastes good. A ratio describes the part to part relationship. So four to three means that for four parts of something, there's three of another. Proportion describes the part to whole relationship. So it's more of a fractional measure. When working with ratios and proportions, the key is to find the multiplier. And that way you can increase everything proportionally. For example, moving from four to six, the multiplier is the new amount divided by the original amount, which is six divided by four, and that gives us 1.5. And don't forget, you can easily convert ratios into fractions. For example, if the ratio of girls to boys is two to one, then two thirds of girls and one third of boys. Well, all this math has made me really hungry. I think it's time for tea. Here's to the chocolate brownie. Is there any chocolate in here? Yes, a little bit. Just, <laughs> I had to, uh, you know, with my multi skills in the chef, I had to kind of rearrange the ingredients slightly. There we are. All right, is everybody else good? And you got the punch right. What can I say? The multi talented lad. Yeah, with some help. Mm. Uh, seconds, anyone? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. Enjoy everyone. I see you've got a small one. It is a little bit smaller than planned, but you know, yeah, you say that. Yeah, you've got to watch your, watch your weight and all in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Do you know what, Dave? Despite all the help, this isn't half bad. Well, no, no. Hang on. Go. Eat and then talk. <sighs> the thing is, 